Okay, I will show you. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, make sure you like and subscribe. Today, I will show you 7 ways to make a good PowerPoint presentation. So, let's start now. Number 1. Intro Slide The first slide of every presentation must only contain the title and the presenter's information. The title can be 5, 6, or 7 words long. How do we want to put it? It's up to you. The design is yours to make. For the presenter's information, just put the name and the organization or university we are in. For example, in this slide, there is the title, the presenter's name, and the logo of the organization, as you can see at the bottom part on the left and right corner. Try to reduce the words as much as we can here. Having a good title helps to give a good mood at the starting of the presentation and to catch the audience's attention. Moving on to number 2. Show the contents of the presentation. On the second slide, list out all the subtopics of your presentation. It is just like the contents of a book where you can refer to the front of it so you can see the contents of the book. This helps to let the audience know the important parts of our presentation. Give an initial image of what our presentation is all about. Giving our audience something to look forward to is very important as they will remember the crucial and important points that we emphasized at the starting of the presentation. So this is where the audience will know and note what are the things that will be presented in the presentation afterwards. Next, number 3. Show the subtopics in every page. This part is also helpful where we put an indicator of which part of the content we are presenting now. Just now, we have shown the contents of the presentation, right? So now, check the slides with the numbers or the subtopic we just listed. For example, here I have three subtopics in a presentation with four slides in total for all of them. As you can see, I tagged the slides according to their respective subtopics. As you can see, for the first part is system lymphatic. So at the slides, at the right top corner, top right corner, you can see that the text, the same color as in the contents or the kandungan. So what this does is, it helps our audience to keep track of our whole presentation. Next. It increases the awareness of the presenter, which is we are, what part he or she is presenting at a specific time, so that we won't be talking nonsense or saying about the wrong things or the wrong points that we need to present at that time. Number 4. Visual Language This is where we use images videos or animations to talk for example in this slide i am showing you right now i used images to show the types of lymphocytes if you don't know what lymphocytes are they are white blood cells so here i used a huge big mouth scary looking white cell which is the phagocyte it is uh, one type of the lymphocytes so what does phagocytes do they eat pathogens. So from the word eat, that explains the big mouth. The purpose of using visual language are to save time so we don't have to say everything. Next, the audience can easily understand the context of the presentation just by looking and they don't have to ask about that thing. So this is a very important one because it helps our presentation to be more smoothly and saves time. Now moving on to number 5, filler slides. 
from the name you can see its filler so it fills the gaps between things so these slides are placed in between contents let's say we just finished content number one and now we are intending to move to content number two so in between those gaps we have to fill with something so we can easily just get into it but it will be hasty to avoid that avoid being hasty or rushing put some fillers like subtopic slide like what I'm showing you right now question slide like did you know that you can put like that or even some videos to catch the attention for the audience for the next content this way the audience can separate between points of our presentation and they can catch the important gaps before we proceed to another content this is also very important to make sure your contents are delivered smoothly next is number six animate in sequence whenever using the animation make sure we always animate which point is first which point is last we cannot simply put them all together at once especially when we have a few things that needs to be explained differently for example here i am presenting about flipped classroom where that should be three parts using the animation i separated these three parts and explain them separately this way audience will be able to understand the contents more easily next they will be able to see the process and flow of the presentation number seven recap slide this is the last slide where we recap all the points we have presented we can easily take back the content slide it's just the same design and add some details to it or we can make a simple graphic organizer like a mind map flowchart or anything showing the presentation as a whole as a one thing here we will give a brief explanation of everything from the start of the presentation until the end so why do we do this we do this to help the audience to remember back the important points of the presentation clarify every content presented this is likely to avoid any misunderstanding during the presentation and lastly maybe you can have a question and answer session q and a session so this part is very important before you say thank you to your audience and ending your presentation so that's it for the video those are seven ways how you can make a good PowerPoint presentation. So I've been thinking of making another video explaining more about this. If you want me to make it into a series where I will be explaining every point in details from step 1 to step 7, let me know in comments below. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.